What up? Welcome back to math for your brain, for your eyes, for your class that you're taking math for graduation, then probably for not very often ever again. Okay, so speaking of not very often again, let's learn about identity and equality properties. These are a bunch of things that you're going to have to know um, for math class and then probably um, not need to know for anything ever. Okay, so I want to start with the identities, okay? Um, these are just properties of math that are true, okay? They are just things that are that are essentially facts, F-A-C-T-S, facts, okay? The additive identity, okay? First off, this sounds like add. You're doing addition. <laughs> well, guess what? You are adding, okay? The property here with the additive identity is that A plus zero is going to equal that number. It means any number plus zero is still going to be itself, okay? And this is something you've known for a long time, okay? But this is essentially what makes it true. Your whole life you're thinking, ah, oh, seven plus zero is seven, bro. Man, seven dollars plus your zero dollars is seven dollars, okay? First you need friends with, with more money because zero dollars isn't a lot of money, okay? Um, better negative though, am I right? Am I right? Mortgage, am I right? Okay, so this allows us to say this is true, okay? So if you said something, for instance, say you said um, um, eight plus zero, what's that gonna equal? Eight. Correct. Great work. Okay? And that's the additive identity property. Okay? Now you're thinking to yourself, what's the multiplicative identity property? Well, it sounds a lot like multiply. If you take that I and say it weird, it's multiply. That's right. You're going to multiply. Okay? Based off of this one right here, where we know we're adding zero and we're keeping it as the same number, what can you guess this is going to be? What can you do with multiplication to where you have something it's multiplied by something, but then it equals itself. Say it with me. That's right, times one. So essentially A times one is gonna equal A. Okay, so for instance, nine times one. What's that gonna equal? Well, you're multiplying nine times one, which is the amount of, that it already has. That's nine. Great job, okay? That's the multiplicative identity property. You won't use these very often. You might use them in some proofs, but they're just something you have to know because that's what math tells us to do, is to know things. <sighs> Sorry, I was just making sure my camera was on. I didn't want you to, you know, miss out on this gold. Okay, next one. We got the multiplicative, multiplicative property of zero, okay? What do you know happens when you multiply something times zero? Say we've got nine times m equals zero. What do I know my m has to be? What's the only thing you can multiply a number by to equal zero? Well, maybe if I get low with those numbers, like a one times a negative one. Ha, <laughs> that's negative one, bro. Okay, you're wrong. The only thing you can multiply a number by and get zero is zero, okay? So the multiplicative property of zero, just remember, multiply by zero, okay? and that equals zero. So like A times zero equals zero, okay? And that's the multiplicative property of zero. All right, our last identity we have on here is the multiplicative inverses, okay? AKA, this is the street name, reciprocals. I have no clue if I spelled reciprocals right. Um, teacher, excuse me, teacher or mom or parent or whoever's in the room with you helping you or watching you, hopefully you're being supervised. This is YouTube. Don't run free range chicken on me. Uh, make sure I spelled that right. Uh, multiplicative inverses, aka reciprocals, okay? Um, later on you're gonna hear the term opposite reciprocal. Um, you'll get to it, okay? I don't wanna jump the gun, but you can check out my videos. Okay, hey, you know what you should do? Just subscribe to my channel. That'd be a lot easier and then you wouldn't miss anything. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, self-promotion, like midway through the video, you've definitely already checked out. Multiplicative inverses, aka reciprocals, okay? Now, reciprocal means that you're switching it, you're flipping it, okay? What we want are multiplicative inverses. We want them to be essentially exact opposites of each other. A lot of times when you think of eight, you think of the, the opposite of that being, you know, negative eight or something like that. It's not. With this one, you will have, um, here's the formula, a over b times b over a. Essentially what you do is you flip them, okay, like that, and that makes it the multiplicative inverse. So if I wanted the multiplicative inverses of A over B, it would be B over A, and the reason is when I multiply those, 
I get A times B, just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. Those are the same things. What I know anything divided by itself is going to be? One. Okay? Multiplicative inverses, aka reciprocals, always multiply to equal one. All right? Because they're just the flip of each other. So, for instance, let's say you had um, seven. Okay? And we want to find the multiplicative inverse of that. What do I know that number is always over? One, because seven divided by one is still going to be seven. Not changing it, just changing what it looks like. And then the flip of that would be one over seven. Multiply across that seven, multiply across that seven, plus seven divided by seven, one. That's the multiplicative inverse, okay? And that's all of our identities, okay? Checkbox, okay? That looks ugly, don't like it. Don't like it, scratch it. Okay, thank you for joining me. Multiplicative inverses, cool stuff. All right, now, real quick, I want to talk about equality properties, okay? These are your four major equality properties, okay? These you hardly ever use. You might use them when you're doing a proof, but I think you've actually stopped doing proofs as much anyways. So I just want to look at these main things right here. Let's look at reflexive. The reflexive property, okay? Reflexive means just like in a mirror. When you look at a mirror, what does it do? It reflects back to you, okay? Um, so you're going to reflect across. Reflexive property means that something is always equal to itself. Super simple, but you will still have to use it, okay? So that means that 7 is equal to 7. That's true. 8 is equal to 8. Yeah, that's, that's actually a property. That's something we have to teach. <clears throat> it just is something in math that means it's true. So essentially, if we're doing a proof, and we need to prove that something is equal to itself, or an answer here is the exact same, like 14 in this problem is equal to 14 here, the reflexive property gives us that, okay? Um, you'll use it essentially more often, like if you're trying to prove two triangles are congruent, and, or, yeah, two or, triangles are congruent, you would use it like saying this, this line in this triangle is equal to this same exact line in this triangle, okay? The lines apply to two different triangles, but we still have to prove that it is equal to itself, okay? That's what the reflexive property comes in handy, okay? All right, the symmetric property. Um, symmetry, that means that something looks the exact same on both sides. This tr triangle thing right here is symmetric, okay, for the most part. This side, if you flipped it over, it hit the same side. People are generally symmetric, unless they have pff, blemishes, all right? <clears throat> so you got the symmetric property. That means that if A equals B, I can flip that, and B can equal A, okay? That's all the symmetric property means. Um, so if... 8 equals R. Well, then guess what? R is equal to 8. I wrote that weird, but it's true. Okay? That means you can flip it. All right? Usually, you only use that at the end of your proof whenever you want to look pretty. Okay? Whenever you want the things to look pretty at the end, you might just say, oh, I want my answer on this side. I'm allowed to flip it. Okay? That's what symmetric property is. Now, the transitive property. Transitive, pro transitive property of equality. This is what I like to call the middleman property. What this does is the transitive property cuts out the middleman. If A equals B and B equals C, I know that my A and my C are also equal. This is one of the, the cooler ones that you use more often. I don't know why I think it's cool. I just I picture the transitive property as like like pretty much like the green Power Ranger. Like it just sits in the back and it's like like long hair and he's like, dude, what's up, man? I used to live in California. Super rad. When he didn't live in California, he moved over from like two towns over. He's just lying to look cool. Okay? And that hair, he just didn't get a haircut, and then he just talked to his mom and let him keep it. He's really a troublemaker. You should stay away from the transitive property. But he's still cool. Transitive property. If A equals B and B equals C, well then our A and our C are equal. Okay? Because B is their link. You can essentially cut out the middleman and make it equal. All right? Cool. Last, last one. Um... I want to talk about the substitution property of equality, okay? This is the most important one that you'll use. This is essentially saying, I say essentially a lot, sorry about that. This means that if something is equal to something else, you can replace that something with the other one, okay? It'd be like if you're like, I need change for a $10 bill. Can you give me two fives? Sure. Both of you have the same amount of money, but you have something that looks completely different. Well, pretty different, okay? You went from a $10 bill to two fives. They're the same thing. They're equal. 
but you substituted it. If you have a team of basketball players, you call it a substitution whenever someone goes in for someone else. That is only true, really, if they are the exact same skill level or the exact same person. If you have a clone, we have clones now, right? They cloned a sheep like 20 years ago. I think they can clone people. Um, so <clears throat> I think they have like 15. Like every time somebody becomes president, they made like 10 copies of them. That way if something ever happens, they just like replace them. It's a pretty good idea, actually. Okay, substitution. So if you have, um, if A equals B, then I can replace A with B. So for instance, I've got um, 3 equals 2x plus k, all right, and k equals 8. I can replace wherever k is with 8. So it'll be 3 equals 2x plus 8, okay? And that's substitution. And now you know your identity and equality properties. Thank you for joining me. Please subscribe. Um, today's lesson is brought to you by pizza and the three books I've written. So if you want, search my name, Tyler Tarver, on, uh, on Amazon, and you can buy one of the three books I wrote, or all three, whatevs, or just send me a check. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Or not. Just, if you could subscribe, that'd be the coolest. First things first, you the coolest. Uh, I'm done. I'm done, guys. I'm done. Cut it off. Cut it off. Just kidding. Hit him with the outro. Hello. Thank you for coming to Tarver Academy. Please subscribe. Maybe.